So hi everyone, welcome back to another video and what we're going to do over the next two or three videos is we're going to look in detail at our technique. So our technique is what our grip is doing, what our feathers are doing, what our backswing is doing and we're going to look at all of those little areas in detail and discuss what are the important things that you should be thinking about as a player. Now just before we get into this video, if anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, I'm working with players on this very table all the time to help them to improve their games. So if you visit my website at www.bartonsnooker.co.uk, you can find all my details on there and you'll have my contact number and my email address. And there's a little form you can fill in there as well. So send me a message and I'd love to help with your game. So let's get into this little video series and see what's important with our technique. Now I've broken this down into the following areas, so we're going to look at the uh, grip, we're going to look at feathers, pauses, the backswing, the delivery, and then staying still on the shot. So those are the separate little categories we're going to look at, and we're going to look at each one of those in a lot more detail. Right, so the first thing we're going to look at is the feathers that players do on the shot. So you'll have seen this on the TV, that when players get down to the shot, so once they're down in their address position, they're doing what we call the feathers, and this is the, the waggling of the cue here, like this. Now, the reason we do those is for a few reasons, really. We're trying to get a feel for the shot. We're making sure that the cue is going backwards and forwards in a straight line, and you're also just helping yourself to just sight the shot a little bit better once you're down. So it's just giving you a lot of feel and just getting your arm moving. It's exactly the same as you would see a golf player doing a, a practice swing before they actually hit the ball. We're managing to do that in snooker by just doing those feathers, those practice strokes that we do before we actually strike the white. Now, the really important things with the feathers are that you find a rhythm that suits you. Some people feather a little bit quicker. Some people do longer feathers, so they're really moving the cue back a long way. Some people do little tiny feathers, but those are absolutely unique to every single player. So. The way I always describe it is if I was to try and throw a piece of paper into a bin that was in the distance, you might get some people that like to get a bit more of a feel in the arm like that. Other people might just like to do some little waggles and then throw the ball into the bin. Exactly the same here when we're getting a feel for the shot in snooker. Your feathers are going to be unique to you. But what you don't want to do is what you see a lot of amateur players doing or beginners when they're first starting and they get into a shot and they're really quick they're doing their practice swings and all of the cue action just ends up a little bit rushed. So what we're really trying to do with those feathers is keep everything nice and smooth, find a nice rhythm for you where you feel like you're not rushing the shot. So let's try and play one of these thinking about just the feathers here. So I'm doing my pre-shot routine. This is my line here that I want. And then I want to walk into this shot, get it down on the shot, get everything in position, do some feathers to get a feel for it, pull the cue back, and just play the shot nice and soft, not really thinking too much about other parts there. It's just my feathers gave me that little bit of a feel for the shot there. And that's the important thing that you want to get right with those feathers that you know why you're doing them. Don't rush them, don't do them too quickly. Have some nice control when you're doing those practice swings. Now, another thing that you might have noticed there was how close my tip gets to the white ball when I'm doing those feathers. And that's really important because, because those are practice swings, you want to be practicing exactly where you're about to strike that white ball. So if I was to practice doing my feathers and I was quite a bit away from the white ball, it would mean that when I actually pulled the cue back and then I was striking at that point, I wouldn't actually be hitting the white ball. The cue would still have quite a bit of way to travel forward before it would make contact with the white. So it's really important that you try and get your tip as close to the white as possible so that when you're doing those practice swings and getting a feel for the shot, you're practicing exactly where you're about to strike in your action and that will give you the best possible hit. So when I'm feathering up to a shot like that, you'll see that my tip goes very close to the white and then I can pull back, play the shot and it means those practice swings that I just did were right next to the cue ball practicing for exactly where I'm about to strike. Right, so now let's look at the pauses that a player would do in their cue action. And those pauses are where the actual cue will stop moving. So after you've done your feathers and you're preparing for the shot, when does your cue stop moving? So there's actually three places where a snooker player might pause. When they first walk in and get down to the shot, they might pause with the tip at the white before they start their feathers. 
Then they'll do their feathers to get a feel for the shot. Pause again at the white, then pull the cue back, pause at the back swing, and then play the shot. Now, you don't have to do all of those pauses. It's just, again, it's really important that you're aware of that those pauses exist and why you're doing them. And then find a pattern that, for you, feels nice and comfortable. So if I was to get down to a shot, I don't really do a pause when I get down and point my cue at the white ball to begin with. So I'm going to approach this shot. I walk in, get down, and you see I've got that first pause here, so you can do that one. Then I might do my feathers, pause at the white, pull back, and then pause and play the shot. So that was my shot completed with those three pauses. Now you'll see, even amongst the top players, they all do it a little bit differently. Sean Murphy, for example, he gets down to the table and he starts feathering straight away. He's got, he hasn't got that first pause where he gets down and pauses at the white ball. So it's really important to find a pattern that works nicely for you and you don't copy somebody else. Then the other thing to consider that's really important here is the backswing pause, so the one at the end of your backswing. That is the one that I find when I'm helping players and coaching players on the table. That's the one that I find can mess a player's timing up. So we always hear timing, and that's just how well we get through the cue ball and how accurately we strike and get the speed of the cue correct. And of course, if you deliberately put a backswing pause in for a player that hasn't got one, I think that can mess a player's timing up. So let me just show you a big backswing pause. So we'll go down into the shot, we'll pause at the white, we'll do some waggles, and then I'll pull the cue back and pause, and then play the shot. Now you can play like that, but what I prefer to do, instead of telling players to deliberately pause at the, at the end of the backswing, I just like a controlled smooth backswing, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. We'll discuss the backswing, but that just helps naturally get that pause in without deliberately thinking you've got to come back, stop, wait, and then play the shot. So the, the pause that I do think is important that you'll see all the top players doing is the one at the white ball. So you do your practice swings, you do your waggles, and then you stop at the white, everything's in line, you're ready to play the shot, smooth backswing, and then you play. So let's hit a couple of those. So I'm behind the shot here, Got my distance, walking into the shot, get down, a few waggles, pause at the white, back, and play the shot. So you can see that time my backswing pause wasn't as long, but I did make sure that I had a nice pause at the white when I was ready to start my execution of the shot. So I paused at the white, backswing, and then delivery. Let's just have a look at that one more time. So I'm behind the shot here, walking into the shot, Little tiny pause at the white to begin with. Do some waggles, get ready. Pause, back, and through. So understand those three pauses. See what works for you. Lots of players do it differently. John Higgins is somebody that likes to get down on a shot and pause at the white before he even starts his waggles. As I say, Sean Murphy doesn't do it like that. But what this video series is all about is getting you that understanding of all of these different things that you can do in technique and then you customising it, stealing little bits from different areas, thinking, yep, yeah, that, me, me that makes me personally feel more comfortable if I pause at the white, or maybe you think, that makes me feel more comfortable if I pause at the end of my backswing, so that's brilliant. So we understand now those three different pauses, how they're useful, and then you can find your own routine from there. Okay, everybody, so that's it for part one of this little series on technique. Next week, we're going to look in some more detail about the grip and how that functions and how our backswing should work. Also, remember to stay tuned for the next episode of Through the Ball, where I answer your questions. So if you've got some key shots that you'd like me to explain exactly how those are played, leave those in the comments below, and I'll try and answer those on the next episode of Through the Ball. Remember, if you did enjoy this video, remember to give the video a like. If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. That really helps me to keep all this content coming regularly. And just another reminder, if anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one training sessions, I'm working on this table to help players to improve their game. So have a look at my website, www.bartonsnooker.co.uk. You can send me a WhatsApp message. All my details are on there. There's a form to fill in. Please get in touch. I would love to help with your game. So stay tuned for lots more content on the channel, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.